All right, turning now to the state's court system. New York's Chief Judge Janet DeFiore will step down at the end of the month after more than six years in that job. And the chief judge is a really important role. For one, they lead the state's court system. So every big decision on how the state's courts are run goes through them. But for two, the chief judge is also the head of the state's highest court, the Court of Appeals. So it's a lot of power. And now Governor Kathy Hochul will get the chance to pick a new one. It's a really big decision with a lot of implications. For more on that, I spoke this week with state courts expert Vin Bonventry from Albany Law School. Vin, thank you for being here. Always happy to have you. Oh, it's always great to be with you, Dan. Thank you. So we're talking about the Court of Appeals once again. This time, the Chief Judge Janet DeFiore is stepping down at the end of August, leaving a vacancy for her position that Governor Kathy Hochul will then nominate to the state Senate to confirm. It's not a complicated process, but it's a little difficult to say. I want to start with DeFiore with you, Vin. So she has been Chief Judge for just a few years now. She hasn't had a, a remarkably long tenure. What do you see as her legacy? What is she leaving to people as the leader of the state's court system? Well, on the one hand, you know, as the chief executive of the judiciary, you know, we have a ginormous judiciary in New York. She's been extraordinarily active. I think that she's admired by the members of her court and others for her excellence initiative. She's been very, very good, tirelessly working on that. With regard internally at the court, I think, that, well, I know that many lawyers and judges, former judges, current judges, are very, very disappointed with what's been going on at the court itself, whether it's the drastically reduced caseload, uh, whether it is the change in direction so that the court is much more conservative than traditional. And again, Dan, you know, we're not talking about the United States Supreme Court. Right. We're not talking about that. But I mean, in terms of the court being much more pro-prosecution as opposed to rights of the accused, much less sympathetic to workers as opposed to management, uh, much less sympathetic to people who have been injured innocently as opposed to making sure the insurance companies don't have to pay out. This court is not what the Court of Appeals has traditionally been. Now, I want to go to the Court of Appeals in a second, but you mentioned something really important called the Excellence Initiative that the chief judge took on at the start of her judgeship. So this was an initiative that she wanted to bring to get rid of backlog in the court system. We have yes. an extremely litigious court system in a, an extremely litigious state. So do we know what kind of progress she made there? Was she able to reach the goals that she wanted to? I don't know the numbers. I haven't looked at the latest report, but you may have an idea. And I don't know the precise numbers, but I do know, at least from the state of the judiciary where the numbers are given, the backload has been reduced significantly. Oh, great. Another thing that's really important is she really pushed for civility in the court. You can imagine, especially in these lower courts in New York City, where it's like just hundreds, it's like the hordes of litigants coming in. <laughs> It would try any judge's patience. And so, of course, it wasn't exactly the most civil and respectable of places for a litigant to be. And she has really pushed for that to change. Um, and everybody I speak to, whether they agree with the way she votes or not, has been saying she's absolutely been tireless um, with regard to working on that. So with the Court of Appeals, you mentioned a lower caseload, obviously, uh, compared to previous chief judges. Can we talk about the role of the chief judge just a little bit? So in the U.S. Supreme Court, it's a little bit different, I think, in terms of procedure. But in New York, how much can the chief judge, what kind of impact can they have on these policies of the Court of Appeals and the state court system? Let's start with the Court of Appeals first. So can a new chief judge really turn around and get that caseload back up to where it was maybe in previous judgeships? Well, the, the chief judge is the public face of the court as well as of the court system. There's something mystical and magical about being in that center seat. Now, remember, lawyers and especially judges are very establishmentarian. We can call them liberals or conservatives, but they're establishmentarian. They believe in rules and they believe in hierarchy. They set the tone for the court. 
They set the tenor for the court. And so, for example, it's not surprising that with regard to Chief Judge DeFiori, the caseload has been reduced dramatically. It's not an accident. It's not an accident. I know that she feels, so do other members of her court, not all of them, that the court would be better off deciding fewer cases, perhaps spending more time on each one of these appeals. Jonathan Lippman, for example, on the other hand, her predecessor believed that, no, a sense of justice means give lawyers and litigants in the state a greater opportunity to get to our higher court. So when we talk about the Court of Appeals nowadays deciding 80 or 90 total appeals a year, that is an astounding drop from what traditionally the court has been doing. It's a huge change. And to people, uh, litigants and attorneys, and just the public watching, I mean, the big question is who is gonna be this person who replaces Janet DeFiori? And we're uh, kind of early in the process, not too late, obviously, uh, but do we have any sense of who that person could be? There's no short list just yet by the time that we're taping here, but do we know what, what Governor Kathy Hochul may be looking for in a new chief judge? Sure. Well, if I look into my crystal ball, which is usually wrong, <laughs> but, if I, but, you know, I would say, look, Governor Hochul has already appointed Shirley Troutman onto the court. I think the governor, well, I know the governor could make history if she points Troutman to be chief judge. Mm. Not only that, will she make history by appointing the first African-American to be chief, the first black woman to be chief, but that would also give Hochul a vacancy on the court to fill. She could change the direction of this court. She could really change the whole character of this court with those two appointments. Troutman's not the only one. There's another one on the court, Rowan Wilson, absolutely brilliant. Another African-American appointed by Andrew Cuomo. I think he's a real possibility. There are a couple of presiding justices, I would say, the one down in Brooklyn, uh, Hector LaSalle, the one up here in Albany, Elizabeth Gary, they are terrific and they're very well respected. So look, Governor Hochul is going to have a choice of fantastic judges who could be really strong chief judges. It's gonna be really interesting. I mean, as we're talking, this is the person that could change the direction of the entire state court system, something that touches everybody's lives even when they don't know it. So we will give it a few weeks and see where we are. Vin Bonventry from Albany Law School, thank you as always for your insight. Hey, thanks for inviting me, Dan. Good to see you.